How's it going everyone? It's Razine here for Astrophysography and in today's video is the night sky in February. A curated list of targets that I actually think are interesting available throughout the night sky in February. Go figure. The list includes all sorts of object types, galaxies, nebulae and star clusters available throughout a range of focal lengths. And all the focal lengths I'm going to talk about today have been measured using a 1.5 times camera sensor. So that's like your Nikon DSLR or as well ASIO 71MC Pro, which is what I have. So depending on your camera size and your camera chip sensor, your field of view may vary, but I hope this gives you some ideas. With that said, let's crack on. So a lot of people were asking for really wide field targets. So here's a 50 millimeter target for you. And that is the entire constellation of Cepheus. Now, if you frame this up correctly at 50 millimeters, you'll be able to get a number of DSOs in that same frame as well, giving you a large constellation to look at where you can like annotate the lines on it to make a very interesting drawing, as well as little DSOs that will be popping up through the image. So that could be an interesting idea. Keeping with the Cepheus theme, if you're between 150 and 300 millimeters, then the elephant's trunk nebula is right up your alley. You should be able to frame it quite nicely in the entire frame, getting the entire nebula region and also the garnet star. So putting some time into this at those focal lengths could yield a very interesting and very beautiful image. At 300 to 400 millimeters, you're gonna swing over there to Auriga and I'm gonna recommend IC410, the Flaming Star Nebula, a personal favorite of mine. This is a blooming nebulous cloud with a very bright Alpha Auriga star in the middle of it, which is rumored to have come from the constellation of Orion. It also has a fascinating W shape of stars next to it, like a discount Cassiopeia. So that could be a target interest at, three, at those focal lengths. At 500 millimeters, I'm gonna send you towards Cassiopeia and the Sol Nebula. The Sol Nebula being right next to the Heart Nebula, but it's a more blooming cloud shape with like two, like one bigger and one small cloud connected in between. I really like the Sol Nebula myself and I was one of the first SHO images I took. So 500 millimeters, go over there, it's an emission type nebula, so it lends itself really well to narrowband imaging. Still staying in the north for 600 millimeters, I'm gonna point you again to Cepheus, one of my personal favorite constellations that is. And this is the Iris Nebula. Now, not just the Iris Nebula, if you center on the star HIP 104291, then there's another small DSO to the left of it that you'll be able to get into the same frame as the Iris Nebula. Two for the price of one. And also the Iris Nebula, it's just a gorgeous clamshell pearl in space. So that could be an interesting target choice. Getting deeper at 700 to 800 millimeters, IC444, the Jellyfish Nebula. So this is a rather large uh, emission type nebula that has the form of a jellyfish. This is one of those nebulas that is a bit more obvious and easy to see how it got its name. It's got a bright star in the same field of view as well, and you can frame it quite nicely coming up on the right hand side of the frame if you so choose. So the jellyfish nebula is what I'd be shooting at those focal lengths. If you have those 1000 millimeter telescopes at this field of view, then I'm gonna be pointing you to M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. This is a staple in the Northern Hemisphere. Always up there, I believe it doesn't say, I think it's Circumpolar. But it's quite an interesting galaxy. It's a spiral face on galaxy. We're looking directly at it. And it kind of melds into the background sky, giving it a slight challenge to it as well. It lends itself really well to HARGB composite photography because you take the broadband image of the galaxy itself, then you can take some really long HA subs to pop out those nebulous regions of the Pinwheel Galaxy. So consider giving that one a shot, or 20 or 30, depending on your sub length. 1500 millimeters of focal length after 8 p.m. it rises above 20 degrees altitude and that is M94 the Crox I galaxy. This is one of these galaxies I think looks fascinating but I just don't have the focal length to really do it with but it's an interesting like galaxy with a nebula shell around it, it looks really cool so if you're at those focal lengths, I recommend giving the Crocs Eye Galaxy a go. At 2000 millimeters with those really long focal lengths, I'll be recommending M106. This is a spiral type looking galaxy that's slightly tilted face on. It is absolutely beautiful with a gorgeous blue tone to it, if I'm believing Stellarium correctly. And I think it would be a fascinating target choice frames up really nicely at 2000 millimeters. So, consider that one. If you're between 1,500 and 2,000 millimeters and you fancy giving a star cluster a go because let's be honest they're kind of overlooked a lot of the time, I'm guilty of this, M67, the Golden Eye Cluster is an open cluster in the constellation of Cancer for England, James. For you planet hunters, 
pickings are kind of slim, same as they were last month. You have Mars and Uranus. Mars is at its highest elevation, about 51 degrees at 7.30 on February the 1st. This is from my latitude. So if you're higher or lower, then obviously your highest elevation is going to change respectively. But Mars is available. As is Uranus, again, same, about 48 degrees is its highest elevation, about half past 6 p.m. on the 1st of February as well. So those are your two targets. Again, I presume everyone's gonna be looking at Mars because it's easier to shoot than Uranus. And now onto the lunar phases for February, in case you wanna shoot the moon, or if you wanna know when to get the hydrogen alpha filter out, or when to just have an early night. The last quarter is February the 4th, new moon being February the 11th. February 19th is the first quarter, and the full moon, which is the snow moon, is February the 27th. Also, I need to really research why moon, full moons get these names. I'm sure there's something out there, the reason why. Though we did have snow in January. And that was the night sky in February. Now, I had actually a few requests of including the wider focal lengths for DSLR camera trackers and things like that, so I hope that's been useful for you. Let me know of any other suggestions that you want in the comments down below, and I hope this list has been useful for you. As always, clear skies, thanks very much for watching. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you in March.